Yo, what's up? Back with another Smiteman update. Um, real quick before I start, um, I've got a new Discord. Like I said in my last minute update, you should hop in onto that. I'm also going to be putting out a bit more content and also a new outro is there. So if you want to see that, go the end, tell me what you think of it. Regardless, as per usual, we're going to start with the Hunters um, and move over to the solo lane. And if you wanted something exciting from the Hunters, I'm sorry to break it to you, but Ishtar, Cernanos, Manticore, and Rama are still top four. Um, really not much unique from it. I believe that this build still works. You can go it, um, though it has been nerfed. Um, and a more effective build, in my opinion, as a tank player, is something along the lines of this. Where you are going a pen build instead of like a crit build, although there is crit in here. There's a bit of crit in here. This is more for the stats it gives and the passive it has when you do crit. Leather Cowl seems to be kind of like the starter item. It's that or Gilded. Um, but these are kind of your core items that you would build. Devourer's Gauntlet seems to be going more over Blood Forge because Devourer's Gauntlet overall is more power. It does more for you. Other than that, like I said, Sardanos, Ishtar, Manticore, and Rama. And the Manticore has his own build. Um, some people... I, I keep the Crusher in there, but some people have been going with... the. Don't interrupt me. Uh, the Soul Leader going double stacking and then going the Crusher. You can go Blood Forge. You don't have to. Go Heartseeker. Go Titan's Bane. Go whatever. All right. Manticore is more of an ability-based hunter because of the way his autos work. If you are looking outside of that, um, Izanami is, literally does what she's always done. And she has high damage and she's um, she's got a lot of lane pressure. Though she is susceptible to getting caught with no CC immune ultimate, and her dash is very predictable. Other than that, though, Kribbis is okay, though I don't think she's as good in ranked. Um, Chiron's okay. You'd go an ability-based build like you would with the Manticore, minus the Soul Eater. Other than that, though, you should probably just stick with those. In terms of supports, going over the Warrior tab first. Horus! Um, he does a lot. Especially in ranked, you're an aggressive support. You can set up things. You can force things yourself. You do a decent amount of damage. You are a pressure pick, and you can set up picks easily in ranked. And people are a lot more separated in ranked, so it's super easy to catch somebody out if you're queued with somebody, or even if you just are with your jungler. Catch them out. You have healing. Your ult's pretty decent. Um, the pro the main thing that makes him really good is this. Fracture into updraft, because you stun them, shred their prots, and then you knock them up, and they're CC'd forever. This dash has a super low cooldown now as well, so you can constantly be dashing and healing up your team. He's overall a very good support, and he might be the best support in rank. Other than that, Ares Yumoja, high skill, or high skill ceiling, I should say. If you're good with them, play them. They are good and ranked. Um, Yumoja's a bit more consistent, and it requires less, I guess, ability to play them, but Yumoja is, has the potential to do so many different things with the way her abilities work. Terra. Maui, super good. Um, Sylvanas is decent. Bacchus is pretty good. Atlas is pretty good. Moving over to mages. Nox. Uh, if you've been watching SPL at all, you've been seeing Nox be prioritized a ton. Nox is super fucking annoying. Um, especially as a tank diving the backline, she can be super annoying for you. If, you are, if you're a support player and you haven't been practicing her, you should definitely pick her up in some casuals first before slamming her in ranked, but you should definitely start picking her up. Aphrodite, I forgot about her last week somehow, don't know how I did that, has fallen off a little bit, but she's still very, very powerful, especially in ranked. I would still consider banning her. I don't know how I forgot about her last week. It's kind of embarrassing, to be quite honest with you. Um, moving over to mids. This is kind of similar to what it was. Um, what I said last week was Merlin... Tiamat's kind of fallen out a bit, but Merlin is super powerful. Thoth is super powerful. Janus has kind of risen up into, if you see my most recent video, I built an excessive amount of pen on him. Um, regardless, it's... <laughs> I've had multiple people tell me I built a lot of pen, and I told them that I did not care. Um, and they were upset about that. Regardless, um, the... Janus does a ton of damage. He's super slippery, slipping in and out in fights. Um, you build either Conduit or Sands of Time. Sands of Time's a bit better early, but late game Conduit is better. Um, because you can upgrade it into Gem of Focus. And you also don't have to worry about the 
overcapping on CDR because you go Deso, you can go Chronos Pendant. It's okay, you don't have to. But I think Gemma Focus is the best starter for Janus. Um, Spirit Deso, you can go Doom Orb or Rod. Either one works. I'm just gonna put this here. Doom Orb or Rod. Um, you can follow it up with Divine if you'd like. You can also go a Karen's Coin. Karen's Coin also works. And after this point, you can pretty much go. You can go Soul Gem. You can go Ob Shard. Staff of Mirrodin's pretty solid. Soul Reaver's always good. Soul Reaver. Polly's pretty decent on him, too. You can go a lot of stuff on Janus. And it feels good. Regardless. Agni, Janus, Merlin, Thoth. The Morgan's pretty decent. Um, Yu Huang, still solid, underplayed pick. Hell is super strong. Um, she can get picked on a little bit, but she's super strong. Baba Yaga, super good. Chunga, underplayed pick, super powerful. You have a lot of gods that do a lot of things. Morgan Le Fay is pretty decent as well. And if you're going to go Hunter mid, Marty. Mandacorus. Whatever the fuck his name is. Very good mid laner. In fact, I think it's better that it's Hunter roll, but you can play him in both. Marty's kind of the big one. Ishtar's decent, but eh. I would just go with Marty. I'm gonna go Hunter mid. Assassin mids still work, but they're less powerful than the mage mids, so I would just, uh, steer away from them. Speaking of assassins, junglers. Sir Ket. I talked about her last week. I'm talking about her this week. This character does a lot. This is kind of like a build you would want to go. Two different variants. Get the Jotuns, or actually, what junglers have been doing now is because Transcendence is cheap enough to do it, you can go this, and obviously you can get your Rage, you can get your Deathbringer, whatever you want. I would go Eye of the Jungle, Transcendence, Hydras, uh, Deathbringer. You can go Stone of Binding, you can go Serrated, you can go Magi's. Either one works. Any of these work. But I would go these three items. Or these four items. I get Protector of the Jungle. She is a super strong pick right now. And if you're not using her in Ranked, you're doing it wrong. If you're a jungler, practice her and play her. She's super strong. Susano, decent. Kali's okay. I wouldn't call her insane, but she's okay. If you were looking for more of that hyper carry style, Bakasura still feels good. Thor feels really good. Um, Rat is a high pressure early game pick that could feel very, very good. Um, Naja, Mercury, still very strong. Even with the crit nerf, uh, specifically in Merf Mercury's case. Mercury? Mercury's case. Um, but there's a lot of powerful picks. In terms of warrior jungles, don't. Um, you see Sino using Nike or Surtur in SPL, but in ranked, you can go some warrior jungles and they feel okay. Vamana's really the only one that feels good enough to like consider putting him on this list. Gilgamesh, I think, is underrated, but I haven't seen enough performance to recommend it to you. Um, but Vamana is kind of like the best warrior jungle if you're going to go for one right now. In this case, right now. It's meta. Other than that, the Hebo mention here. Hebo can be played in mid and in jungle. I don't think he's a top tier mid, but he's super strong. Um, I do have to mention him. Um, in terms of in ranked, in ranked he's probably stronger than I'm thinking he is. I might be undervaluing him, but he's super strong in mid and in jungle. You can play him in both. I wouldn't call him top tier. I think like Merlin, Thoth, those picks are kind of like the top. Janus, the top. Baba. Uh, but like Peebo's super strong you should be playing soul lane if you're expecting changes you're wrong to expect that but mana and hercules are the only two that threaten carries remotely because of their damage their damage Vamana has a gimmick where he just sticks to he just tries to stick to you and beat the hell out of you and it works hercules has really good cc and high damage which is and good healing which is why it works guan yu's good because guan yu has proc shred on his kit and he's got low cooldowns and he can give his teammates cd he doesn't provide the same level of threat as Hercules or Vamana does, but he's still decent. Um, Odin, good pick. You have the ring, you have a shield, you have low cooldowns. The, the, the thing that's holding Odin back the most, I would say, is he can't use regrowth at all. But Vamana doesn't have that weakness, so... And he doesn't care that he can't use regrowth, I should say. Um, other than that, though, if you're looking at other warriors... It's tier... It's slim pickings. Tier, maybe Nike if you consider it chalk. But outside of that, Hades, I gotta mention Hades. Hades is a damage soul laner that builds full damage and he kills. I will say, some assassin soul laners have been doing decently. 
Um, Thor and Kamazots and Kleena in particular. Kleena is falling out of the meta even though she's still super strong. I think people are just sick of playing her. She's not as good into Herc, though. Hercules kind of batters her, and Vimana ignores her, um, which is fine for her, but she he does more than she does in late game, I think. Um, Bakasura is still a playable pick. Kamazots, I... Have been playing this quite a bit. It feels super strong. His damage is super high. He feels good. Um, even though I believe I've lost both my ranked games with him. I did. Um, he feels super good right now. Don't look at those stat lines. He feels super good right now. He's got high damage. You can build Transcendence really easily. You just go the jungle build and soul lane with a Warrior's Axe on the front. And you drop a Warrior's Axe later for like a Magi's or something. Still powerful. In terms of Guardians. Eh. There's playable ones, but they're not great. Cthulhu's playable. Yorm's playable, but they're not great. I would avoid them. You are going to go some of the more jank picks. Um, Chernabog is probably the best hunter solo right now. You can go Marty and solo if you want, but... Eh. Chernabog's probably the best hunter solo. And then... Mages. Like I said before, Hades. Chunga. Hell. All playable there, but Hades is probably the best out of all of them. Other than that, though... Keep, uh, keep an eye on my channel. I'm going to be keep uh, posting content. I'm going to not do it daily, but I've got a lot of content in the reserves right now. Some Hearthstone Arena gameplay and then also just some Smite gameplay. So thanks for watching. Peace.